Hi, Hi we're the Winters. Winters. I'm Kathy. I'm Tom Winter. We have five children. We have Kristen, who is 16. We have twin girls, Kayla and Erica, they're six. <laughs> Tori, who is three, and Tommy, who is two. Let go! I feel like my head is going to explode sometimes when the kids are screaming and I'm here by myself with them. <laughs> Erica! Kayla will hit Erica, or vice versa. Erica and Kayla, stop! Tori is a screamer. <laughs> Tommy, he's a strong-willed two-year-old. Yeah. There's something that he wants, and it's in your hand. He's going to come up and bite you. <laughs> I'm actually Kristen's stepdad. You know, love that first sight, you know, and I feel like I'm what Kristen's dad. I'm not arguing with you. You, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. I just dropped it. You kept going with it. We used to be best buddies. Now it's, it's all about her friends, you know, and going out. I don't like the friends that she hangs out with. I feel like Kristen's doing things behind my back. Nothing's wrong. Something's the matter. Mm -mm. She thinks that I'm not cool. When I told her, that's why your mom married me, because I was cool. I am a pre-K teacher, and I'm with children all day long. I bring Tori and Tommy to work with me every day, and then I come home, get Kayla and Erica off the bus, and then I start all over again. I go from one job to another. Don't fight me, Kayla. <laughs> she comes home, we see each other for 15 minutes, and I'm off to work. All right, love yous. Bye. Good luck. I'm a restaurant manager. I work long hours at night. Yeah, I wish he could get some more day shifts because I'm doing it all by myself. Bedtime is probably the worst time. Kayla and Erica sleep in their bed. Tori and Tommy, they each have their own room, but they sleep in my bed every night. <laughs> Once we get into the room, it's probably at least another hour, sometimes two hours before they actually go to sleep. Lay down. Lay down. Now! Lay down. Now. I had kidney cancer, and I had my kidney removed two years ago, and I'm mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausted. At night, I lay my head on the pillow, and I say, uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to get up tomorrow and start this all over again. This lady has just recovered from kidney cancer and taken under all this stress. We need Super Nanny's help a lot. We need Super Nanny. I know you're tired, Mom and Dad, but don't throw the towel in yet, because I'm on my way. I was afraid of what she was going to say to me about what I've done with the kids so far. Nice to meet you, Tom. Hi, Tom. I think Joe's going to tear me up. Say hello. Hi. Hello. Are you, oh, I'm Tommy. And how old are you? I'm two. You're two. OK. What's your name? Tori. Tori. Show me this one. You're right hand. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Erica. Pleased to meet you. I'm Joe. And who's this? Kayla. Uh, Kayla, are you sure this is not Erica again? No. <laughs> and we've got Preston, haven't we? Yes. Where's she on a Sunday morning? Dad knocked on Kristen's bedroom door and she was still sleeping. Can we just wake you up? Yeah. You, sorry, right. that's why I'm so late. All oh, right, 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 okay. You were out last night? Oh, um, for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I met Kristen and I know that her dad was worried about what she'd been up to the night before and I just knew this was something that I would have to follow up on. Let's go. Come on. Erica, you two out. Oh. Go on, Tom. Speak to you later. You know, just a hi and then back to bed. What happened? Joy hit you. Hey. You don't put your hands on your brother, you understand? <laughs> All right, so, hey. All right, let's go. I could see that Dad was struggling with the kids, and I know he was about to go off to work, but I wanted to see exactly how he would deal with the kids on his own, so I sent Mum off on an errand. I have to go run some errands. I'll be back. Are you kidding me? No. Where are you going? I have to go do a few things. I'll be well, back. When are you going to be back? When I'm done with what I have to do. How long do you think you're going to be? 
I don't, whenever I'm done with what I'm doing. All right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Be back soon. When I'm done. All right, all right, all right, Tori, all right, all right, all right. Kayla, can you get out of there, Kayla, like that? You, out of there. Can't do it. I want to run out of the house. Move. Hey, where'd you go? Where'd you go? With two minutes, she couldn't even really got in the car and drove out the driveway. What, what store are you going to? I couldn't believe this. Well, call me later on. 20 minutes later? He's ringing her again. Mom. He's crying. They're all needy. They want something. Mom. Hurry up, please. Bye. Mom. But Dad's panicked to be left with his own kids. I mean, he breaks a sweat. I'm all flustered. I'm red. I know. I can see you've broke a sweat. Yeah, I'm starting to get red. Dad was absolutely petrified to be left with his own children. Who are we? Does he get nervous? He sounds like he's nervous. Mom. I don't know. I guess so. I don't really talk to him, so... You don't? So you buying groceries for everybody on the block? I got you. Can I have that, please? Tori, do you see Daddy's face? I'm serious. Look at my face. Am I laughing? Tori, you're gonna get in trouble. Come here. So, what form of discipline do you use when they misbehave? I realise that to release the pressure from Mum, this dad would have to learn how to take control so that he wasn't pacing around his own house like some security guard. My partner just came back in the door to help me out. The cavalry just came to save the day. Thank God you're home. Tommy. Let's talk. Once Mum came home, I had a good chance to be able to talk to Kristen about why her dad should be so suspicious of her actions. We just don't have conversations. I think I say, like, four sentences to him a day. That's it. Does he uh, trust you? I don't think he trusts me. Because of what? I don't know. He just... Does he know any of your mates? Does he, has he seen any of them? Does he know who you hang with? I mean, he does he know where you, where you go? I yeah, mean... I tell them where I go, and he, I'll tell them who's picking me up. Do you think he knows you? No. Like, I'm very mature, and he, I don't think he sees it. All right. After talking to Kristen, I wanted to find out from Dad exactly how he felt. So I took him out into the backyard, hoping to get more info. She was the first, first one, first child in my life. I would do anything for her. I got with Kathy when Kristen was three years old. I you know, loved that first sight. We were both like, you know, peanut butter and jelly. Now we're the pinky and the thumb. So you really, you don't know what's going on in her head. I mean, no. that's, that's the worry, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know where where she's at, you don't know her? No, I don't. I don't want her to make a mistake right now. I don't know her friends, so I can't trust her friends. I mean, straight up as a father, what do you think she's doing? Maybe smoking weed. And, right. You know. Do you think she might be smoking some pot? She might be yeah. drinking? Yeah, maybe. Smoking? You know, interacting and... So why she's having sex, she's yeah. drinking, she's smoking pot, yeah. all that kind of yeah. stuff? And that worries me. The problem is, as his daughter's become a teenager, he's sitting there thinking, what's she hiding? He's thinking the worst. We're losing each other. We're going to be lost. I think it's very common for every father to worry about their daughter. The fact is, if Tommy doesn't speak to Kristen, the distance is just going to grow and grow. Daddy kiss, goodbye. Give daddy kiss, he's gotta go to work. My work schedule is from 4 p.m. to 3 a.m. I feel bad because she's always with kids and you know she never gets a break. Be nice. I'll call you later. All right. All right. After Dad went to work, I really got a chance to see exactly how much Mom has to deal with. Mommy. It's time to go take a bath. No. I dread bath time. Stop. It's everybody screaming at the same time. <laughs> It's Tommy and Tori jumping off the side of the tub. Tori! It's Erica and Kayla kicking each other. Kayla! Erica, Tommy, get down. It's just mass chaos. Tommy, get down. Tommy jumps up on that ledge and he likes to jump off and it's highly dangerous. 
Give me heart attack here. Tommy! It's a very stressful, highly charged situation for Kathy. I'm not laughing. That's how you're going to crack your head open. You know, little Tommy was the biggest problem at bath times because he was doing the most dangerous of things, even though he was having fun. It was an issue. Let's go. That time is crazy. Tori. Tori. Where's this one going? Mount Everest. Between bath and bedtime is probably one of the most stressful time for any parent. Three times I've said your name. Because it's when kids are teasy, they're really at the end of their day, everything's wearing thin. Get up. I told you no. Mum really got fed up with Tori's little antics and set her on the naughty step for time out. Sit down. Get on the step, Tori. No. She holds Tori down on the step, which is a no-no. I mean, it's a real common mistake. Sit down and don't move. You need to go back to that step where I put you. I like game. Ow! No fighting! Do you hear me? You don't fight! There was fireworks going all over the place. And Mum decided that she was going to do two timeouts. She put Tommy and Tori in their bedrooms. And Tori was just kicking that door open. Mum was holding the door to keep Tori in, but then little Tommy would come out. And then she'd go and put little Tommy back, and Tori had come out. Close it. Get in and close it. Get in and close it. I mean, it was crazy. Get in the room. Stop. I didn't tell you you come out. I have no control. Are you going to stop? <laughs> Bye. Now you stay in there. In your room. So it's gone 8 o'clock. The kids are riled up. And Mum decides that she's going to put the kids to bed. Good luck. Go five. Four. You're going to be sorry if I get to one. Bedtime in my house. Kayla and I are going to sleep in their beds. They're very good about that. Get up in the bed. Tori and Tommy will not go in their room. They will not sleep in their beds. They sleep in my bed every night. Stop. Stop. These parents have not taken into consideration the importance of the children sleeping in their own bedrooms, let alone in their own beds. It is time to go to bed. No, no, go to bed. <gasps> Ow! It usually lasts for about an hour to an hour and a half that I have to keep telling them to lay down and go to sleep. <laughs> it is time to go to bed. No, no. It was getting late, and I'd seen all I needed to see. It was time to go. Tomorrow morning, family meeting. OK. OK, so we can deal with all of this. OK. All right, I'm going to let you go and do that. Okay. Okay. Good night. I need my bed back. I need to get my sleep. And I think that they need to get their sleep, too. It's just ridiculous, it really is. I can't wait to get in here tomorrow morning to start and change stuff for this lady. Watching the pair of you yesterday and observing your family, I realise that I am very much needed here. I want to talk firstly about yourself, Cathy. You have been through tremendous ups and downs with your journey, your illness of having kidney cancer. Just that alone is indescribable. That's no walk in the park. You are the backbone of this family. You're not in your head there, Tommy. Tell me what you're not in your head for. Because she is. She keeps us the, the, the glue that keeps us together. But then how much can she possibly do by herself? I mean, seriously, Tom. You know, let's talk about yourself here. What are you doing? What are you doing to support your wife? What are you doing to support your family? What are you doing? with regards to making sure that Kathy's life is easier.
tell him what you want to tell him. You know what? Here's the time. Tell him what you're feeling inside. Just that I need more help. <clears throat> I'm here to help you, honey. Okay. Let's talk about bath time. Oh my God, bath time. <laughs> it's such a chaotic time, you know? And I just feel that you, you make a rod for your own back. You've got four in the tub. I mean, it's gonna be hectic with four in the tub. You're causing drama where it's not necessary. Bath time should be fun. So let's work on that, please. Okay. Because that kind of bath time is fun for the kids, but it's dangerous. It's a highly charged situation. Mm. Yeah. And then we go into bedtime. Let's get real here. These kids need to be sleeping in their own beds. Especially for Tommy, this is something he's getting used to. He kept climbing out of his crib. As you have got him a little bed, then that's what he needs to learn to sleep in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about him recognising it's his bed, in his room. Let's talk about your relationship with Kristen. <sighs> Boy, where do I begin? You don't trust her. No. You don't trust her. You think she's hanging around with her own crowd. You think she's stupid. You think she's going to get herself knocked up and pregnant. You think that she's not capable of being able to read between the lines. In other words, you know what you were like yourself at 17, 18, right? You've got to trust her that she has the savvy and the knowledge to work out the difference between smart moves and not such smart moves. Well, any time a boy comes over his house, I think it's a, a, a boyfriend. It can't be just a friend. I think it's someone that she's interested in. Maybe so. Maybe it is somebody she's interested in. But, like, get to know her friends. Like, give her the chance to be able to feel like she can invite her friends round. Gives you a chance to be able to get to know her friends too, right? Mm hmm OK. I know that I can put techniques in your house that can change the circumstances, but I need two parents who are willing to muscle through the hard work that it's going to take in the beginning. There's no two ways about it. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be hard work in the beginning. But the results will be dramatic. So when do we start? No. Right now? All right, let's go then. Thank you. When teaching began, my priority was to make sure Dad understood discipline, to take the pressure off a of Mum. Hello. Hello. Hiya. There was no doubt in my mind, as soon as I could put discipline in that house, as quick as possible that we were going to be using it. And it's exactly what happened. You give them eye contact and you come down to their height. This is not about intimidating our child. This is about making sure you teach your children values here. I didn't think it was going to work for us. I was a non-believer. My kids aren't going to listen. They're not going to do it. I could tell that Dad wasn't feeling very confident about whether he could do discipline or not. But, you know, Tori played up, and Dad got to see for himself. Now, you're going to go on and all these steps, and it, if you, when you stop crying, you can come more. But until then, you stay right there until Daddy comes and gets you. Do you understand me? Explain. Tori, look at me. Just when, talk. When, you'll get off the step when you learn how to share with Tommy. You understand? No, what is it that she did wrong? You were screaming, and you took... You wanted to take everything. Right, that's why you're on this step. You that's why you're on the step. Right, move away. He struggled doing that. He looked back every time he placed her there. He felt bad. Right, that screaming's got you like that, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. How, why? Because it, I feel like she's in trouble, hurt. This isn't about Tom. This is about his duty as a father and supporting his wife. And I wanted to stop from screaming. You feel like she's in trouble, she's hurt. Mm -hmm. oh, OK, oh. right, come with me. Come. So I grabbed him by the hand and we walked around by the stairwell. There she was, she watched us. And then he realised, no, that she, she is all right. Is she hurt? No. Huh? Nope. Did you see that with your own eyes? Yep. All right, rest yourself. OK. If Dad's to carry his share of the load, then he needs to realise that it doesn't matter how many times he puts his kids into timeout, they're not psychologically going to be scarred. OK, you go back, you explain again why you placed her on the step, and then say, I want you to tell me you're sorry. 
okay? Hugs and kisses, and then go and apologise to Tommy, okay? Hugs and kisses, and then she apologises to Tommy afterwards. Okay. Tori did not... She did not win. We won the battle by putting Tori on the naughty step. <laughs> Do you know why Daddy put you on the step? You tell her. Daddy put you on the step because you didn't want to share with Tommy. Yeah. Tell Daddy you're sorry. Yeah. I love you too. Hugs and kisses. Hugs and Cuddles. kisses. Cuddles me. Now that Dad's ability to discipline has improved, I wanted to see if we could improve his relationship with his daughter, Kristen. Let's just say how it is. You guys have not been talking, so what was the first hurdle? Boys. It's always been a problem. What, that she looks at him? Yeah. Why? I just don't think any boy's good enough. I think that my dad doesn't know how to accept the fact that I'm growing up. She went from being... A, I think I grew up really quickly. ...a little girl to being this beautiful young woman now, and I... It's hard for me to cope with that. You know, I got this picture. And I brought down a picture with a smile she, she used to have on her face all the time. That smile, I went back on your face. I have that smile. And back on my face, you know, when we see each other. Every morning, you used to wake up like that. I still do. Maybe I'm just missing it. So what does Dad need to learn to do so that you feel that you can come to him again? I just want you to listen to me and listen to my opinions and see how I see things sometimes. What do you want from me? Would like some of your time. Some time for us. I'm willing to put 100 in. Okay, me too. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Why don't we give your dad a chance to meet some of your mates tomorrow? The, the talk with Kristen was great, you know. It should have been done a long time ago. I love Kirsty. You know, it just made me feel good, made my heart feel good, made her feel good. You can come talk to me anytime. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kristen's friends came around and it gave Dad an opportunity to meet them. He's had definitely assumptions about what they may look like and what they may be into. Tom, this is Marie and this is Muse. And nice to meet you. That's James and that's Chelsea. I'm excited, I'm nervous, you know. Hopefully I don't make Kristen embarrassed and I, I don't look dorky to her friends. No, I'll go meet some of the people that just walked in. No, more people no, walked in. No, no. I wanted to size them up, but uh, anxious because I wanted to see what boy that she talks to more than, you know, the other one. This is Cameron and this is Wesley. What's up? The reason, like, I don't bring the guys over to my house that much is because of my dad. When I have guys come over my house, <laughs> the only way they can stay at my house is if you can walk it out. <laughs> If you can't walk it out, you can't stay in my house. Why? I can do it. I want to see what you got. <laughs> I'm old school. I used to be like this. <laughs> Let's see what you got. You can just kick it old school. I'll give you guys a pass okay, this time. Wesley. Next time you come here. When my dad started popping, whatever he was doing, they were enjoying it. It probably felt cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> Once Tom spent time with Kristen's friends, I think he realised himself they're not a bad bunch. They're intelligent, they come from good homes, just like his own daughter. Ew! Thank you, sweetie. I was very wrong about Kristen's friends. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Look forward to seeing you in the future. Yeah. <laughs> He'll walk it out. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll see you there. His ankle is perfectly fine. It's important for every parent to get to know their teenage children's friends. Thank you. I think it was good because they do get along with my parents. They can trust them. Mum's absolutely exhausted, and it's going to be important for me to pace her throughout the time that I've got with her. Tommy's bath time and bedtime is an issue. It needs to be addressed. I've brought in some little bath toys for him to play with. OK, okay we're going to run his bath. Put in some toys, let them have some fun. Then I want you to give them the countdown. 
All right, just say to him, in 10 minutes, we're going to be getting out of the bath, OK, Tommy? OK, and then in five minutes, and then a couple of minutes, mm -hmm. and then, right, let's tidy up all the toys. Okay. Tommy's the ringleader when it comes to all the wild play at bath time. So if she can get him just to settle down a little bit, the rest will follow. Come on, bring the dinosaur in the bathtub. He wants to go swimming. Come OK, on. you put him in there. See that bag of treats? Daddy. See that bag of treats? Daddy. Say, look what I've got. Daddy. Tip him up high Daddy. into the bath. Sometimes when kids don't want to get into the bath, using toys to lure them in is certainly effective. Okay, pick up the dinosaur and just throw it in. That's it, and it goes. And once the dinosaur went in the bath for a wash, Tommy followed. Keep the water running like you normally do. He started to wash himself and then he started to wash dinosaur and he was into the whole bath time scene and, you know, that brought a lot of peace to mum. Can you wash your body for me? I think it's healthier for the children to be able to have that space. It's healthier for me. It's more of a time where I could just sit back and enjoy the kids and watch them play and see the smiles on their face. Can you clean up those toys and put them in the bag for mommy and pull the plug on the tub? They're part of the process of ending the bath time, pulling the plug and letting the water out. Bye-bye, water. And saying goodbye to the water and putting the toys away. It's helpful to them and it's helpful to me. Oh, you got it. Very yeah. good. After bath time, the next step was to teach mum how to get Tommy to sleep in his own bedroom. Once you've read him a book, we're going to place him into his bed, OK? And we're going to sit on a little chair adjacent to his bed, okay. all right? And you're just going to turn away so you're not actually looking at him. OK. All right? If he gets out of his bed, I want you to place him back into his bed. OK. OK? And I want you to keep putting him back into his bed until he stays in his bed. OK. OK? I don't think Tommy is going to go down quietly, but at the same time, it's going to allow him to realise the importance of sleeping in his own bed. Oh, look, at now they're cleaning the dish. I wasn't nervous. I was, oh, how long is it going to take? And am I going to be strong enough to keep putting him back in the bed? Mommy. The book is over. And it's time for Tommy to go night-night. Oh, no, I want to No, 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 we don't need to put it in Tori's room. No, that stays Tommy's room. Tommy to go night-night. Turn the light off. Turn the light off. You're going to sit on the chair, mm -hmm. and when he gets out of his bed, you're just going to say nothing but place him back into his bed. Okay. Because Tommy's never slept in his bedroom before, it was important for me to use the sleep separation technique so that he would feel secure with her still being in the room. Turn around. That way. Okay, when he gets out of his bed, place him back into his bed. It was a little bit difficult for me to not be able to look at him or say, you know, it's time to go to bed. You've got to get going because he's following you in that bed. Good job. <laughs> you did a great job. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is what you have to go through every night. I feel so bad for you. She looked pretty good when she came down the stairs. She didn't look as stressed as, you know, we usually would have been. You're a bloody trooper, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to be going away for several days. OK. I want you guys to continue using the techniques that you've been taught. I'm afraid that I'm going to resort back to my old ways instead of, you know, calmly handling the situation. Also, what I would like to see is the bedtime routines continued. 
my biggest challenge is to stay with everything that Joe taught me, you know. And I'll see you when I get back. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye. 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 So, three days away, Dad had a day off, did he do his share? I can't wait to find out. Hiya. Hi. Oh, I could hear a pin drop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the anticipation. Mm -hmm. The first clip we're going to take a look at is bedtime, and I'm very eager to see bedtime with you guys. Keep on my dress up. Keep on my dress up. No, no. <laughs> Night time. I started to put Tori and Tommy down by a little after seven, and it's 8.15 now. It's taken me a little over an hour to get them both down. It's fantastic. Never thought it would happen. That's a major, yeah, it is. major difference. It is. You spent an hour doing it, you went through the steps, they bantered a little bit and they went down. You know, and it just goes to show you that as soon as the steps are done, you, you leave them no option but to realise, OK, I'll go to bed now. You guys have really done this very, very well. And you can see how quickly, you know, that that has worked, yeah. you know, which is amazing. So what we're going to take a look at here now is the naughty step. Let's take a look. Why is the refrigerator open, Erica? Go close the refrigerator, please. I wasn't the one who opened it. Tori did. You were the last one in there. Go close the refrigerator, please. No. I'm going to give you one more chance, and then you're going to go sit. Why did I put you on the step? Because I wouldn't shut the refrigerator. And why couldn't you just shut the refrigerator, like I asked you to? Because why did you I... have to stare me down? Because I didn't open it. it but you were the last one in it. So you see, you set yourself up there, you put her on the step, and what didn't you do? Was I supposed to say something to her? Yeah. When you place them on the oh, step, you explain see. to the child why you've got them on the step. OK, I thought it was after. You do that after as well. OK. Yeah. OK, so this clip is the last clip. Erica, Kayla and Tori, you don't hit. That is not nice. Come over here. Look at me. Well, while you're waiting, instead of fighting with each other, go play something. She slapped. Um, I just, I need to work on my tone with them. I know that I do. Do you feel like you're not able to control the kids? You feel like they're not listening to you and doing as they're told. So you start to panic mm -hmm. because you feel, am I going to be in a place where, you know, I've got no control, they're not going to be listening to me, they're not going to be doing as they're told. It's like, let go of it. Yeah. But then let go, let go of it. So what I'd like to concentrate on for this return here is the naughty step and just going over the steps again. Yeah. Certainly volume and tone of voice. OK, so. Let's get back to work, because okay. I've got two busy bees who've done a good job so far, <laughs> and I'm eager to start. After seeing in reinforcement how difficult it still was for the parents to do the naughty step, I felt it was important to put a chart up there to remind them. Your warnings, low tone voice, eye contact, come down to the kid's height, explain, always explain. They need to know why. If they don't know why, then they can't change it, they can't stop. OK. OK, so explain why, set the timer, Make sure they do their time. If they get up, you place them back and set the timer again. When they've done their time, you explain again. OK. OK. Hugs and kisses. I'm not holding any grudges here. That's why we do hugs and kisses. OK. Because it's about them learning the value of being accountable and responsible for their actions. OK. I need to work on my patience the most, is, you know, having the patience with the kids and understanding that they're kids. Hugs and kisses. All right. As quick as they can. After we finished going over the technique, I saw that Erica was refusing to eat her last few bites. 
Here's your plate. Take daddy's seat right here. All right, you got two choices. You got no choice. Now you go back on the step because you're not listening to nobody. Give her a warning. If you don't sit down, you're going to go on the step. This is your warning. You sit down on the chair and you get on with eating your dinner and you listen to daddy. Any nonsense out of you right now, you'll be going straight on that step. Do you understand me? Right, then do as you're told. Erica was having none of it. It was going nowhere. Time for the naughty step. You were told to do something and now you're going on. Remember the steps. Because you didn't do. Remember the steps, take it to the step and then explain. Oh, it's all there for you. <laughs> Don't talk, it's all there for you. <laughs> Erica? You were told that you needed to eat some of your dinner. No, sit her up. Sit her up. She's being disrespectful right now. Sit up. This is, this is her. This is her being babyish. Stop this right now. Now, just hold her there and then just tell her. I wasn't doing the naughty step the correct way, and if I'm not doing it the correct way, you know, it's not going to work. Erica, you put on the step because you were told to eat, and you're not eating. I'm ready. Away, come away. She's acting babyish. Finally, Erica stayed there for seven minutes. Erica, come down here. But Erica, come down here. So the next step was to explain why she'd been put on there in the first place. Sit up over here. When I went to the step to speak to Erica and let her off the step, she was crying and wouldn't look up at me. Erica, you were put on the step because you weren't eating. Okay. I ate it, but I didn't okay. eat it. Okay. Come here. Okay. Come here. After Erica understood what she did, it was time for hugs and kisses. You need to apologize to Mum for not listening and doing as you were told. Sorry. <laughs> so come down, eat your three pieces, and then let's call it a day. I hate the naughty step. <laughs> we gotta say goodbye to Jojo. You've been amazing. Bye, Seriously. The Winter family are starting to get it, which is fantastic. Tom is being more supportive of Kathy, and he's connecting more with Kristen. <laughs> Do you have to leave us? I miss you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Jo has been a big influence. She broke me down. She showed me that you don't have to be a tough guy. You don't have to be a you know, you know, silly man. You, you know, just be you. Bye, 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 bye. bye. I'm very sad that Joe is leaving us. She's just done such a terrific job with helping us get the family back in order again. I'm disappointed that she had to leave so soon. I think things are definitely getting better between me and my dad. Bye bye, sweetie. I think we'll be a really happy family soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. There's still more work for the Winter family to do, but I believe I've given them the tools to make them a much stronger family so that they're tighter as a whole. <laughs> <laughs>